it's great that we can spend this time with you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of foundational things. And, uh, you know, I've been reflecting a lot about eternity and just where do we build our foundations. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, mainly in California or in some other places, you, you see these beautiful homes that are overlooking the ocean and got, you know, grand views and, you know, storms come and, 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 you know, what and eventually happens is landslides and these, these beautiful homes go crashing down the, the side of the hill. And it just reminds me of, of foundations and we can look okay on the outside, but what, what's going on? What, what are our foundations built upon? And, Psalm 127 verse 1 says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Jesus says kind of some similar things when he talks about where, what foundation are we building our lives on? Um, and is it, is it rock or is it sand? And then when storms come, it's revealed what kind of foundation we have. Uh, Paul says the same thing when he talks about ministry. What are you building your, oh, Am I, can you hear me? Oh, okay. I'm getting some buzzes and I thought, oh, is someone letting me know that I, you, you can't hear me? <laughs> I'm learning all the, 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 the subtleties of Zoom again. Um, but Paul talks about a foundation. And what are you building upon? Just wood, hay, or are you building on costly stones? And then it talks about the day revealing what that is what you what is built on it will bring it to light in first corinthians chapter three i'm doing a series or we're starting a series in pittsburgh on first peter and if you know anything about the book it really is talking about that we're we're, we're foreigners we're aliens um, there is an inheritance that's kept in heaven for us and we may undergo a lot of suffering and trials but God wants us to be on the right foundation. And so over the next few weeks, we're, we're, we're talking about building a foundation on eternity. And, uh, you know, I, I want us to have that perspective for our marriage and for our families. Uh, because we, we've got to build into the future. And I don't know if you remember your, uh, you remember your wedding day and uh, just what it was like and some so long ago you know some short time ago but i'm sure all of us no matter how long or short we have we have great memories of it we, we know how we felt we, we we know everything about it and you know i remember that it's august 7th 1982 that was a long time ago but, you know, I remember another day, August 25th, 1987, when Joyce and I climbed our, the fence in our, our apartment complex, jumped into the pool, and got baptized. And our marriage was, was amazing, and it's laid a foundation for our lives together. But 1987, that August date, changed our lives for eternity. And that's just so profound. It changed the destiny of, of where we are going and who we are living for. I want to share. Mm. <clears throat> um, Sean asked me to read this one scripture, um, thinking in light of eternity and God's plan for us and it's in Isaiah 61 10 it says I delight greatly in the Lord my soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels we'll refer to a little bit more of this in a minute comparing you know what we do for our weddings but um this just certainly highlights god's view for us and um and we know that 
a lot in scripture. Um, our eternity is compared and the church is compared to the bridegroom and the bride. And so looking at this whole concept of building our marriage uh, in light of eternity is just so important. <clears throat> I think you've heard it said, you know, you've, you've got to have a vision for the future. You, you've, got to, you've got to build toward the future. Start with the end in mind. I mean, career goals, financial parenting, retirement. You're, you're looking at something kind of down the road. And, and where, do you see, where do you see your marriage in, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Um, you know, it's 40 years. It's, it's, it's sad in some ways that we don't see marriages lasting that long in our, in our society. Uh, and more and more are ending earlier. And, you know, Joyce's parents were together 63 years. And it's, it's just a, such a great hallmark. But again, I want us to think beyond that, you know, and, and today will hopefully kind of stimulate us to think what and where have we been focusing? Even, even the, the coronavirus has caused me to be a lot more aware of things beyond this life. As many of us have heard of family or, or friends going through trials, losing, losing family, losing friends, being laid off from work, um, all of the emotional and, and physical challenges that we're facing, all of the stress of being at home. And uh, it's caused me to reflect, what, what about beyond this life? Am I thinking and building beyond that? And so, so 60, 60 years together, but then what? You know, have you been preparing to meet your groom. That's what this, all through scripture, God talks about us meeting him, meeting, being with him as, as, as a bride and a groom being together. And do we, do we think about that? And are we building our marriage on eternity? Joyce is going to share just about some, how do we prepare for wedding days? And so. Okay. Um, yeah. When you <clears throat> think of uh, when you're getting married, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. And Sean referred to whether it's marriage, finances, parenting. Uh, hopefully we don't go, oh, all of a sudden my kid is 16 years old. How should I be raising this child? You know, we, we hopefully have goals in mind. And, um, you know, when we think of preparation, I don't know when you remember back to your wedding, what were some of the first things that came to your mind? Um, you know, who's going to be your best man? Who's going to be the maid of honor? Uh, who's going to perform the wedding? Um, who's, you know, going to be the attendants? Uh, I remember when our first son, Zach, got married, he asked Sean, um, which do you want to do? Would you like to do the ceremony or be the best man? And it was an honor either way. Sean chose be the best man because he wouldn't make it through. <laughs> <laughs> doing the ceremony and it was a beautiful day um but you know you think of um your budget um you know finding the place um you know to have a reception the venue um the budget in reality not what you wish it were um you know flowers all of these things that we take are is there going to be a dance um writing your vows or just the traditional, or do we do a bit of both? Um, where are we gonna go for our honeymoon? Um, back in the day when we were getting married, there, there was this horrible you know, thing that some people would do is if they found out where you were having, where you were going for your honeymoon the first night, they would just do nasty things. And we found out that someone heard where we were going. So we literally changed it at the last minute. Prayerfully, those things don't happen. But you know, you, we take stock and we take a stake in, in, in our plans. And one other thing is, you know, getting premarital counseling. It's something that we love to do um, with those who are choosing to get married in, in God's church. Um, you know, and we wanna look at premarital counseling from the aspect of um, reality. Uh, because, you know, we can be in a, in a 
a state of thinking everything's going to be beautiful and lovely and perfect all the time. Um, but we need premarital counseling to help us consider our strengths, consider our weaknesses, um, you know, the, the truth and not just fantasy. But that leads us to what we're talking about now, and that is preparing for our eternal wedding. And I love the song that says, I can only imagine. You know, what will I do? Will I raise my hands and sing? Will I bow? Will I fall to the ground? How will we react? We read about different people's reactions, but we are preparing um, for an eternal wedding. And, you know, do we dream about it the same way we did of our own marriages, um, considering the journey uh, to get there? And I thought as I was thinking through the comparisons, um, you know, I have to ask myself, do I still have a best man or a maid of honor or attendance involved in my spiritual journey? Do I still have people in my life that are a treasure that I will go to, to seek guidance, to seek perspective um, when it's meaningful and when I need it, when I know um, there's a need for it? Um, you know, I think even how do we spend our time and our money um, <clears throat> that the same way it took for our wedding plans, am I investing the same way um, in my eternal wedding plans? You know, I think of the way the Bible talks about it, especially in Revelation, it is going to be a royal wedding. Mm -hmm. um, but we Absolutely. can't even imagine the full descriptions and the yeah. beauty that's there. Um, and I don't know if any of you ladies, I don't know about the men, but I remember getting up and watching Princess Diana's wedding and then William and um, Catherine and then Harry and Meghan. I'm a true Commonwealth girl. But it's, it's that little girl in us that's like, yes, it's the fantasy. Um, and they were beautiful weddings and without, you know, who, who knows what was spent on it. But then there's the tragedy of even, you know, Charles and Diana's wedding, let alone, you know, or, or their marriage and then her life. Um, but those are, you know, those are great. Um, but I think we're going to have a royal spouse in Jesus. And how am I preparing, you know, that eternal wedding and that eternal journey that we get to um, spend with him? <clears throat> um, and I think with that is still having the counselors in our lives that, and, and especially with our marriages that can help us like premarital counseling can help us, mm -hmm. um, you know, identify what are the strengths that I'm bringing to this marriage? What are the weaknesses? And, um, and looking at those, uh, you know, with truth and grace, and then making every effort, you know, when we acknowledge those and get help, whatever we need um, that we're willing to pay the price, so to speak, to allow our strengths to enhance our journey. Um, and then also our, you know, our weaknesses to um, desire to grow them. And also, um, you know, the grace to accept where we're at with them. And Revelation 21 is the kind of the, the culmination of, of just God's dream. <laughs> And it says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them forever. And so you may ask, why are we talking about all of this, you know, when it comes to marriage? Because how you view <laughs> this next life really does help shape how you live even in your marriage in this life and whether you are building a, a foundation for the next and whether you're helping one another because whatever 80 years you have here you will have let's just say 80 million years that's just the beginning <laughs> that's <laughs> That's just a way that we can even grasp it. I mean, it, it's, it's eternity. 
So are we building in the, in the right sense? So think, think for a second about your death. And I know this may seem somewhat morbid, but I think for those of us who are Christians, it doesn't have to because we are living for something beyond. And, and you come face to face with God. What is it like? Obviously, there is anyone comes before God. There's a sense of fear, respect, awe and, and, and humility. But are you are you thinking about any retirement plan? <laughs> are you thinking about, you know, um, your 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 job advancement, going up the career ladder, fixing your home. I mean, there's only one thing that matters, and that is what you had invested in during this life. What have you done with the bags of gold, the trusts, the things that God has given you, your talents? And you'll hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enjoy all of the banquet, or you'll hear depart from me. And Again, it's, it's both sobering, and yet I don't, I don't want it to just so be so heavy for us because we do need to be motivated by heaven. Again, as I've been yeah. thinking of, of First Peter, and, and I even did a, did a, a sermon on from uh, first, first Corinthians or Second Corinthians, there is an eternal glory that far outweighs everything. So we fix our eyes, and it's just caused me to reflect, what am I, what am I building on? And so have you been faithful? In those things that God has given you, your marriage, your, 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 your family, your kids, uh, and, and how I view the next life does affect everything. Your view of God shapes your marriage. Your view of eternity shapes your marriage. I mean, I want a happy marriage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want it to be fulfilling. <clears throat> and, and yet it's, it's, it's not just simply, okay, give me the, 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 the bricks and, the, and, and the, 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 uh, the two by fours and the lumber to just build something. It, it's really having God's vision and God's dream. And, and we at times have, have tried to focus on happiness, but it still left us empty. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think our eternal view definitely shapes. Um, our present lives. And even now, especially going through this time of isolation um, and, you know, whether it's affected your time, um, some are, you know, working more, some are, um, you know, less financially stable. Um, you know, it, it, like us, we're waiting for immigration and, and our life has been on hold for actually a year. Um, so, and I know I shared at a communion um, back probably in January, you know, part of our journey getting out of the ministry back in 03 when the um, church was going through difficulties. And uh, you know, we were nine months for Sean to secure a job and we had been in a brand new house, uh, maybe four months. <laughs> so, you know, a new mortgage, um, teenage children, a preteen, it, it was a tough time, but also at that time, as the church struggled, um, in some ways, you know, a lot of us were sheep without a shepherd, and um, and in a sense, perhaps the baby was almost thrown out with the bathwater. Um, you know, Bible talks just kind of stopped happening, and discipling relationships kind of went amok. Um, but we, you know in many ways we were by ourselves and um and where does being where does being by myself lead me um does it lead me to jealousy comparisons bitterness i know i had to work through some of those struggles um and you know does it make me feel selfish like even now um does it make me selfish with my time or my resources and challenges test our heart but it's eternity that shapes it. It's eternity that helps reshape it if it's kind of getting hard. And um, <clears throat> I think for us at that time, it truly was reading about the bags of gold um, that Jesus talks about. And, you know, we had to come to the decision that um, I can't stand before God and say, well, that, that guy you gave five to or two to, 
you know, he had, he, he had better um, connections or he had, I, there's just no comparison. God just wants me to do what I can do. And, um, and so whether, you know, there was a title on a Bible talk, we can invite people over. <laughs> if no one's being hospitable, we can still be hospitable. We can share our faith. Um, you know, and as we actively started doing more things, there were, there were people that were like, hey, can you help us? We have five kids. We need help. Um, you know, there's ways, but we just couldn't make excuses. And, um, and that was just a very, very um, pivotal, pivotal um, scripture. Can I just share something before that? Sure. I just, uh, you know, prior to that, kind of when things crumbled away, what, what Joyce and I began to do is, is we just began to live for ourselves. And we, 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 we tried to find happiness somehow. I tried to find happiness. Once I did get a job, I was all in, all invested. And, 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 and we, we, we did things together. And so, yes, we, we, we built a lot of, we came closer together during a time of challenge. But we were trying to fill our, our lives with things that we thought could bring happiness and, and bring fulfillment. And, and you know, we, we, we even found ourselves kind of just watching a lot of TV and we knew all of the shows. And, and again, like Joyce just shared the bags of gold, it came to a point, I mean, is this gonna now be my life, trying to fill myself with happiness? And it wasn't until we started looking beyond ourselves again mm -hmm. that things changed. Filling myself with happiness and, and just focusing on ourselves, just it didn't do it. And, and we, we had to get focused where God wanted us to be focused. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's like making the, um, the assessment, what do I want to define me? And I've been hearing this song lately, um, you know, about the name of Jesus and what legacy do I want left behind? And is it truly just Jesus, the name of Jesus? I know, I know when I am gone, if my kids are alive and maybe my grandchildren will remember who we are. Beyond that, I'm naive to think people will really know or honestly care who, who was that person. Um, but I know God cares. And so my relationship with God has to define who we are. And, um, you know, and so looking back at those times, it was like, we have to go back to the foot of the cross, lay ourselves at the foot of the cross. And, and even again at this time, will I allow eternity to um, shape our choices? Like I mentioned, uh, last week has been a year that we had to go off Pittsburgh payroll um, because of immigration. And you know, to not break the law, we couldn't take a salary. Uh, and it was challenging and it was, it was tough. Um, and it would have been easy to go look for a job elsewhere. Um, and it's funny because even now we're, you know, we get these entertaining considerations and calls. Hey, would you consider this or that? But in all of the choices and decisions that we've made, God has made it abundantly clear when we surrender, um, you know, the decision to his will, like Jesus did at the cross. And Sometimes it means waiting. Sometimes it means um, standing at the Red Sea like the Israelites. Should we cross the waters raging or standing at the Jordan River to cross? And we know that God has to determine our path. But with all of that, you know, the, t the temptation now with what's going on in our lives um, could lead us to choices that are not spiritual or that are not wise. And we have to ask ourselves, um, am I allowing eternity in this very moment to shape my decisions and to shape our, um, you know, our journey as a married couple? Thanks. I've got a, I've got an app on my phone right now that's, uh, and I don't know if you have Ring, but it's, it's a doorbell uh, that has, when, when someone comes close to it, you can actually see them through the doorbell. Um, and we have one on our back backyard as well. Uh, cameras. I don't know if you can. That's that's our home, and you can get actual live view from the front and from the back. I have it there for for security reasons. But I must admit, when it's really sunny there, 
I look at it and go, oh my goodness, wouldn't it be awesome? Take me home. <laughs> to be there. And, and, and I must, again, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm like, my heart goes there. Oh, to sit on my deck and bask in the sun. And, and so that this, is, this is an app that shows my home. This is an app that shows my home. Amen. You know, this, <laughs> this is what I've got to be looking at, not this. And I've been convicted because David says, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, Psalm 27, 4. And so I've been gazing too much at this. God wants me gazing at him and making sure that the, the foundations of our marriage, we're, we're building on the right things. Um, Cause happiness and just focusing on that doesn't do it. Um, and even just being religious doesn't do it. Going to church doesn't do it. Did you know that the divorce rate among evangelicals is actually higher than non-church goers? That's crazy. Crazy. What, what, what is that saying? That, that's saying that somehow some foundational things are missing. We're going to church. We're checking some boxes. But we're missing some heart. We're missing some foundation. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it's sad that it's a slap in the face to, to, to God and to Christianity and to the world around to be a light. And, and so this morning, it's, it's just a brief reminder as we start talking and, and building from foundation that we've got to build in light of eternity. Second Peter, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. You know, Joyce and I had a new home built and it was cool to see all of the things that went into that and, 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 and as we got to see all of the different stages. But God is preparing a new home, um, a new heaven, I mean, you can have upgrades on a home. <laughs> Cha ching. <laughs> cost you. Yeah. Um, the cool thing is, God is doing all the upgrades and it cost Him. That's true. <laughs> it, he, he, he paid it all. Mm -hmm. and, and so, when it's all said and done, <laughs> I want to make sure that I personally, that we, my kids, my grandkids, and my friends all make it to that home. And so, you know, I've, I, we have some questions there. Where, where are your eyes fixed? And are you building in light of eternity? As we talk in the future about parenting, I mean, this is, this is foundation. You've got to build, you've got to parent in light of where you're taking your kids. Where are you taking your kids to? Where are you taking your marriage? And so, that's uh, just some brief thoughts this morning. Uh, Hun, do you want to say a prayer, and we'll uh, we can okay. we can finish off. <laughs> God, thank you so much for um, just your creation and how much you do adore us, and how much you've um, prepared a home for us and a royal wedding. And Father, how we get to prepare for that even now and how we can experience um, elements of it in this life. God, thank you for the view of eternity. Uh, God, we do um, want to imagine and um, relish the thought of that. But God, we're in this moment so um, humbled and grateful for your grace. And, um, you know, we have a home and a wedding, all expenses paid. And as Sean said earlier, but at the expense, all expensive, you know, you allowing your son to pay the price for us, Father. And we're, we are eternally grateful for that, God. Um, help us to look at our lives, to examine um, what we can do and become fathers so that we can live our marriages um, and build them in light of eternity. And uh, that while our time is here on earth, that you will be glorified through the union that we share here. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.